Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. We are buried there with Christ by baptism into death. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the midst of life. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. For you, you have died, died and your, your life is hidden with Christ, Christ in God. God. On the cross, Jesus said, It is finished. And on Easter, our Father in heaven acknowledged the sacrifice complete by raising our Savior from death. Forgiveness is available to all who call out to God in Jesus' name. Let us, there, let us therefore confess our sins. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we confess that we have not walked in newness of life. We have failed to love you with all that we are and have. And we have not always remembered the new life you bestowed on us in baptism. Lord Jesus, we confess that we have not always sought the things that are above. We have failed to love our neighbors with our thoughts, words, and deeds. O Holy Spirit, we have not always relied on our power to amend our sinful lives. Create us in us clean hearts, and renew a right spirit within us. For we call out to you, Jesus' name. Christ has paid for all our sins. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. As a coronating servant of Christ, and I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing, This is the Feast, which is found on page 155 in the front of the hymnal.
salutations printed in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. And and also. Let us pray. Oh God, for our redemption, you gave your only begotten Son into death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection, delivered us from the power of the enemy. Grant that all our sins be drowned for daily repentance, and that day by day we may arise to live before you in righteousness and purity forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. The Old Testament is taken from the 65th chapter of Isaiah. Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy, and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not allow his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Therefore, they will call, and I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and our faith is in vain. We are found, even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified about God that He was, has raised Christ whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those who also have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But, in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, and by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits. Then it is coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is where the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you're able, please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. On the first day of the week, 
at early dawn. They went to the tomb taking spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of our Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, the old two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened, they bowed their faces to the ground. And the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. And returning to the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking at it. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The congregation may be seated. At this time, if there are any young children like to come up for the children's message, now is the time. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. You say, He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. <laughs> Hallelujah, Christ is risen! <laughs> he is risen indeed, hallelujah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> this did not go how I anticipated. That's okay. I was getting ready for church today and, and, and I dropped I dropped the cross that I wore all during Lent. Right? Remember, I'd wear this one during Lent, right? Right? And, uh, yep, yep. And what happened is that I dropped this and it fell off, and Jesus came off the cross. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? A bad thing? I think it's a great thing that Jesus came off the cross. Because Jesus came off the cross, he was, he was killed on Good Friday, and he took up the sins of the whole wide world, and they put his body in the grave, and you know what? The cross now reminds us that Jesus is victorious over death in the grave, and Jesus is victorious over all the bad stuff that happens. And so I am happy that Jesus is no longer on the cross that he is not dead, but that he is alive. What affection? Yeah, uh, well, well, there's a little dab of hot glue gun. You see, when Jesus was put on the cross the first Good Friday, they used nails, right? When I fixed this before, I used hot glue. Yeah. But there's just something wrong about hot gluing Jesus to the cross, right? <laughs> Which is probably why it didn't work, right? Sad Thursday? Yeah, I think we call that Monday Thursday. I don't forget now. No, I did not forget. Today, though, we remember Easter. Today, Monday Thursday and Good Friday are sad dates. And we see Jesus, like, suffering and, and, and stuff. Today, we celebrate Jesus rose victorious. 
that he's alive. And I'm grateful that you all are alive, right? If you're alive, raise your hand. Josiah. <laughs> okay, well, apparently we're having a funeral here this week. That's okay. Yeah, no, it's, uh, we rejoice that Jesus is alive. So let's try this again. So repeat after me the same style that I do. So I'll say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. You'll say, He is risen. Do you already? Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. He is his risen indeed. Alleluia. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. Let us pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus is raised from the dead. We thank you for the new life you give us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Take a piece of candy, one for you and one to share.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text is the Gospel lesson. As they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. Our text. There's a lot of remembering that happens with Easter time. Maybe you remember back when you were a kid and the traditions that you had as far as like looking for eggs and looking for chocolate and maybe you remember your, you know, I, my, my sister used to complain that the Easter dresses were itchy. Uh, I remember that. So I mean, if you wear an Easter dress that's itchy, my condolences. I've not had that experience. Uh, I remember as a kid, back, back when I was a kid, uh, you actually looked for real eggs outside. And so hard-boiled eggs that would be dyed. Uh, and so we had a church Easter egg hunt. And uh, every year there would always be a few that were not quite found. And so you'd get your eggs that were actually real eggs, and you'd crack it, and maybe it was a good egg, maybe not. And, and one year someone, you know, all the parents brought in a dozen eggs or something. There were some that weren't quite hard-boiled all the way through. That, that was not a good year. <laughs> and so this transition to plastic eggs, I don't think is such a bad thing, but I remember that, wondering if you're going to get like this rotted egg or like a good egg. Uh, my father and I had a tradition where we'd ride, we were both cyclists, and so we had a sunrise service on, by the, the town lake when I was growing up, uh, one town over, so we'd ride, I think it was about eight miles or so. And some Easter mornings we would there, be there, and, and I'd be in my shorts, and it would be comfortable, you know, and I'd have the instrument strapped to the luggage, to the rack on the back of the bike, uh, because I'd play either trumpet or mellophone, uh, some years it was gorgeous and we'd get together and we'd have our four part hymns by the lake. Uh, other years we would be in frozen icicles by the time we got there and I felt sad for the poor pastor's daughter who's a violinist because you just can't play violin when your fingers are numb. It just doesn't work. Those are the memories that I have and I'm sure that you have memories of Easter's past of the churches that you grew up in, or this congregation as you grew up. And my guess is that times have changed and the things that you remember has changed. This word remember was in our gospel lesson twice. Um, and, and it says, um, you know, so, so the gospel, the angels appeared to them. Um, you know, he is not here to re remember how he told you while you're still in Galilee. And so they had been told that Easter would happen. They were told that the Son of Man would be trained the hands of sinful men, that he would rise again. The Gospels have him told three separate times before Easter about Christ's resurrection, quite specifically what would happen. But they weren't able to comprehend it. They just didn't get it. The angels gave their message he is not here. He is risen. Remember what I told you. Uh, and then they remembered his words. It's like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then it all starts to make sense. And it gradually unfolds as, as later that day the disciples on the road to Emmaus will be there and Jesus will come walk on them. And then they remembered and they were revealed by the break of the bread. Oh yeah. And then the day of ascension, 40 days later, and they remember even more. And the day of Pentecost, they remember even more completely that Jesus Christ would suffer, that he would die. More than that, he would be raised again to new life. We need to be reminded of that as well. Because sometimes we, we forget. We forget that we are forgiven. We forget that Christ has paid the penalty for our sins. We forget that even though the, the good that we would do, we do not do, but the evil we do not do, that we keep on doing, that Jesus Christ was raised for you and for me. We forget and we think we cannot have victorious living. 
But we live victorious because death and the grave have been conquered and we have been given new lives. We may not always live a new life. Beside the point. Jesus has given us the gift. If you were to pass away today, abundant new life is yours. You see, God does forget uh, the Old Testament lesson. Behold, I grant a new heavens and new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered. So what's forgotten? Well, it's the constant training of God's people in the Old Testament. He had miraculously delivered them through the waters of the Red Sea. He had done them with manna and quail. They're always praying, rah, 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 God, why did you leave Saturn to die? Rah, rah. God's people are quite curmudgeonly in the Old Testament. And stubborn. <coughs> That's forgotten. And disbelieving. That's forgotten. And constantly going back to God for us. That's forgotten. That sin, that broken, that stubbornness, that sense of entitlement of God's people in the Old Testament is forgotten. What about your past does God not remember? What about your stubbornness? What about your sense of entitlement? What about your going through the motions and false worship? What about your past is forgotten? And by the past, I don't mean the long distant past. I mean last week, or yesterday, or last hour, or a minute ago. Your sins are forgotten. Because Jesus remembered. When Jesus was born, the, the prophet Zechariah scooped him up in his arms and he said this, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember His holy covenant. See, God remembered His promises He gave to you in the waters of baptism. Yet Easter is not only about remembering that God remembered His promises, it's certainly not about us remembering Him because whether you are aware what God did or not, God's still going to be God. Whether you're aware of what Jesus did or not, Jesus is still going to take the sins of the whole world upon the cross. He's still going to suffer and die and be raised again. We also we know that God, we also, it's certainly not about God. <laughs> we are reminded that God is restoring His perfect will, His perfect order. We remember that God has remembered us. Because sin is brokenness. Sin is separation. Sin is that wholeness that we do not have. Sin is that dismemberment. Where the one part of our mind says one thing, the other part of our mind says another thing. The old simple self says, do this, do this, do this. And the new man in us says, do this, do this, do this. And we're at this conflict, this war. And we're dismembered within ourselves. In Christ, He remembers us. He puts back all the broken pieces. He makes us whole. And He makes us His new creation. There's a good chance that as you rot in the grave, you will be dismembered. Your, your, body, your limbs will literally fall, fall apart for the rest of you. And on the last day, He's going to remember you and make you a whole human being. Body, mind, and spirit. He already has started that and has done it. He takes our brokenness. He takes the jigsaw puzzle of our broken life. And even though we can't see all of how all of our life fits together, He takes us and He remembers us and He makes us whole on account of the cross. St. Paul says it this way, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. If God can raise Jesus from the dead, and He did, and if God can raise you from the dead on the last day, and He did, God can certainly put together the broken pieces of your life. Easter is not a past event. Easter is not a distant reality. Easter is here and now in you. As you hear His Word, as you receive the gifts He offers in a few minutes, and as He does indeed make you His whole, chosen, beloved, forgiven, victorious people. In Jesus' name, Amen. Please rise as we confess the Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed as found the inside the back cover of the hymn. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being in one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came out from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, who was crucified as the rest of the conscious fire. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into the dead, and sits at the right hand of God, and he will come again for him to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worship will glorify, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue the prayer of the church is printed in the bulletin. Uh, additional prayers that have not been listed are requests for Sheila Kimley. Uh, she had emergency gallbladder surgery. Uh, and through that, somehow, she has pneumonia. Uh, so she's hospitalized at Mary Lanning Hastings. Also, prayer request for my uh, stepmother's mother, uh, Susie Conshock, uh, nearing 100, she broke her femur. Um, and my great aunt, Joan Schuster, uh, hospitalized as well. So let us pray. Let us pray for the church here and around the world and for all people in their various conditions. We remember before you, Heavenly Father, all in whom your Holy Spirit has worked faith in your Son, especially all who rejoice in his victory over death and the grave. Renew in all of us new hearts and minds, so that our celebrating will have no end. Risen Savior, Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. We remember before you, Lord over all, those who are unjustly accused, imprisoned, or exiled from their homes. Raise up compassionate rulers to seek out all who languish in jails, prisons, and refugee camps, and grant them speedy justice, freedom, and return to their homes. Risen Savior, Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. We remember before you, Creator God, those who till the soil and tend the flocks, all who distribute the earth's bounty, and all who care for this good earth. Guide and direct them, so that at times of sowing and reaping, buying and selling, produce harvests that feed the nations. Risen Savior, Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. We remember before you, Spirit of love, those who are calling out from stresses of body and soul. We especially raise before you Daniel, Josiah, Irma, Bill, Romaine, Steve, Zach, Carol, Benton, Skyler, Emily, Mardell, Jeff, Jane, Martin, Arlen, Leonard, Bill, Sharon, Milton, Arla, Sully, Susie, Joan, and Sheila, 
and those who we name before you in our hearts. In sighs too deep for words, hear the depths of their distress, intercede for them, and grant them relief, <coughs> restored health, personal dignity, and hope for the future. Risen Savior, Lord have mercy, hallelujah. We remember before you, Lord Jesus, those who would have their way by force of arms or cunning of mind. Thwart their plans, guard the nations of the world, and let peace spring up with righteousness. Risen Savior, Lord have mercy, hallelujah. We remember especially this day, risen Lord, your glorious resurrection from the grave, and your presence with us now. Remind us each day of the new life you have given us, so that we live in constant, joyful faith until we see you face to face. Risen Savior, Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Risen Savior, for your mercy, sing we Amen. We continue as we greet one another with the Easter joy and peace, saying, Peace be with you. 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 Oh, sorry. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The congregation may be seen as we praise God with our tithes and offerings. that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us 
and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praise you in saying... of all creation, for you have had mercy on us, and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For Christ, our Passover Lamb, has been sacrificed. By his death he has redeemed us from the bondage to sin and death, and by his resurrection he has delivered us into new life in him. Grant us to keep the feast in sincerity and truth, faithfully eating his body, given into death, and drinking his life's blood poured out for our salvation until we pass through death to the promised land of life eternal. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he betrayed, took bread, and we give it thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you, this do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. And we give it thanks, he gave them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Karen, you should maybe see them.
As you're able, please rise for the post communion thanksgiving. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you refreshed us through this solitary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon your favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated as we sing hymn number 478.